Let's move on to a couple of other things that are making news, not the least of which is DACA. DACA is all over the place. Of course, it is key, it appears, to whether there will be a spending bill or there won't be a spending bill. There's either an agreement or there's not an agreement. But one thing we know for sure, that a judge in Northern California said that President Obama could not undo a policy, a policy, not a law, a policy by the Obama administration. And we do know the De Department of Justice has appealed to the Supreme Court for them to just simply declare DACA unconstitutional or illegal or whatever it is. It's just it's seeking to have relief from it, basically. What's your reaction to this whole mess surrounding DACA? Were you shocked at this judge's ruling, first of all? Well, I'm not, you know, I'm not shocked at anything that comes out of uh, the district courts in California or the Ninth Circuit, uh, for that matter, although I think the, the government should dare the Ninth Circuit to uphold this because it's that preposterous. Um, you know, I, when I was a prosecutor in New York, we used to joke that uh, if you picked up the country by the eastern seaboard, all the loose stuff rolls to the Ninth Circuit. And, uh, you know, seeing that again and again, not that we're any great shakes out here either, but, yeah. um, it, you know, look, it, it's an executive order, which means it can be countermanded by right. the next president. But what the courts in this immigration area, and in particular border enforcement area, uh, have have sown into the law from the beginning of Trump's term is what I've called a jurisprudence of Trump, which goes something like this. Uh, because he made provocative statements on the campaign trail, we are no longer as judges required to look at the four corners of any order that the executive issues. Rather, we're entitled to read the president's mind and impute uh, to him a uh, racially venomous, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, attitude. Uh, and therefore, it doesn't matter what the orders actually say. It's the fact that we think he is a racist and therefore we can erase whatever policies uh, he, he makes. And, you know, the way our law is supposed to work is, you know, don't tell me the guy has a dirty mind. Uh, tell me what the four corners of right. documents say. And if it's legal, then it's legal, even if you don't like the guy. Well, I mean, my reaction to it was say, he basically said, no, I'm sorry, President Obama's pen is mightier than your pen, President Trump. So just go home and live with that, which is, I, I agree that it defies law and common sense, which is the, the exact statement from uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Just a strange ruling. Yeah, and it's it's really bad, Bill, for the judiciary. Because in the end, you know, they may feel good flexing their muscles and doing this stuff. But the reason that we respect and follow the directives of the judiciary, which, as the framers point out, they don't have a budget and they don't have the sword. They just have judgment, mm -hmm. is that we believe or we, we internalize the idea that they are applying the law without fear or favor. They're looking at what the law says, applying it to the facts and doing that dispassionately. If all the decisions are going to be politicized, then there's no reason to pay any more attention to the, the judiciary than you do to, say, a partisan party convention or platform.